Hello my charmed ones and welcome back to my channel for another video. We are currently in that transition period between two months and this is about the time where I like to sit down and do my monthly planning routine. So I thought that we could sit down and plan together and I could walk you through my planning process step by step. Now, if you're someone who's interested in creating productive and functional planning routines in your life, I do actually have a guided monthly planning workbook that I'm actually going to be using to help me create my monthly plan for the upcoming month. So if you're interested in following along with that workbook, which also kind of goes along with this video today, I'll leave a link down in the description. But essentially, I'm going to be taking us through that workbook step by step. And the workbook does have like different inserts and um, worksheets for you to actually fill out and do each element of this process. So if you are someone who doesn't necessarily have the same planner as me, like I use my Charmed Life Master Planner, I'm going to be using my digital version on my iPad today. If you're using a planner that doesn't have as much space or as many worksheets and inserts that help you map out different um, views for your plans, then I would highly recommend picking up that workbook because you can essentially do all of your planning in that workbook ahead of time and then take the final result of those plans and put it into whatever system you're using. So that is what we're going to be doing today. I will be using the workbook. Definitely get your copy if you're interested in following through this process and developing your monthly functional planning routine on your own. So let's get started planning for the month ahead, shall we? First off, I want to make sure that you have a period of about 30 to 40 minutes blocked off to complete this process. Since I'll be guiding you through the process, I will be giving you prompts and then I'll keep time for you to actually complete each step. If you are new to monthly planning, it might take you a little bit more time to complete this process in the beginning. So feel free to pause the video when you need to catch up. Also, if you need something to drink, pause now and go get your coffee, tea, water, or other beverage to help keep you energized for this planning session. So grab your planner, your writing utensils, and any other bits and bobs that you like to use to plan, and let's begin. The first step of the monthly planning routine is the monthly review. So in this step, we will review the month that is ending for patterns that can help us learn to plan better moving forward. So there are four prompts in this section that I want you to respond to. Number one is what in the last month worked for you? So I'm talking about wins, healthy choices you made, major tasks you accomplished, boundaries you set, a new skill you developed, decisions you faced and made, obstacles you overcame, self-care that you made time for, mindset work, objectives or goals that you hit, new habits or routines that you integrated, and any sort of successful planning or successful execution of a plan would go under this prompt. The second prompt is what didn't work. So think about the tasks that you avoided, habits you didn't stick to, plans that didn't quite work out, routines that you didn't stick to, things that overwhelmed you, perfectionism that creeped in, and any procrastination you faced. Prompt number three is which incomplete tasks from the month need to be migrated to the new month. So essentially I want you to review your planner for the past month and make sure you've checked all the boxes on things you have done and identify which tasks that you planned to do in this month, right? Didn't get done and decide whether or not those tasks now need to be moved forward into the new month or if those tasks can possibly be moved to other months in the future, or perhaps you just have to let go of them altogether because the time is no longer right for them. And prompt number four is what I've learned. So how to plan better, how to motivate yourself, tasks you enjoy or don't enjoy, and what needs to be shifted or reworked for you. So I'll go ahead and give us a few minutes to complete our monthly review. Mm -hmm.
Step two is the brain dump. So I want you to use the following prompts to help you get your thoughts, plans, dreams, and ideas out of your head and onto paper with a brain dump. The next four questions will help you to pinpoint priority tasks that should have your primary focus in the month ahead and help you to set boundaries so that you avoid unnecessary obstacles and make time for actions that will bring you in alignment with your best self. Question number one is what do you need to get done in the next month? And I want to focus in here on need. What absolutely needs to be done next month? Question two is what would make next month feel productive and successful? Very often I find that it's not the months that are super, super busy that I feel the most productive. In fact, I usually feel the most out of control in those sorts of months. But for me, it's usually when I'm taking some dedicated action within a month um, to actually move things forward that I feel productive. So what for you is sort of lingering in your to-do list right now or in your life or in your thoughts that if you were able to accomplish this next month, you would feel like that was a really successful month and a really good use of your time. Question number three is what drains on my time and energy do I want to watch out for and avoid in the upcoming month? And what is my plan for dealing with them? Look, all of us have been alive on this planet for a couple of decades at this point. So we actually know some of the things that could be obstacles in our lives. And very often we just kind of let them interrupt us, right? They, we let them get us off of kilter. We let them, you know, knock us off balance instead of identifying these obstacles for what they are and making plans to avoid them. Now, I'm not saying that your plans would completely avoid maybe different people that you know or different situations that you know you're not going to be able to control. However, the one thing you can always control in every single situation is yourself and how you are going to react when someone approaches you or when a certain situation comes up. So looking ahead, right, into the next month, what are any potential obstacles you're going to face and what is your plan for dealing with them in that moment, right? Having that plan already made out to say, okay, when so-and-so comes and asks me to, um, you know, volunteer for this, I'm going to tell them this because I don't want to have to, you know, be in that position, right? That is the sort of thing that we are talking about here, is making a plan for how we ourselves are going to respond when certain obstacles pop up in our life, okay? So that is that prompt. And question number four is how do I plan to show up as my highest and best version of self this new month? Look, for a long time, I thought that if I achieved certain things, if I did certain things, took certain actions, that I would just one day miraculously wake up as like my highest and best version of myself, like that ideal self. But I found that you actually have to start showing up as her first. And when you do show up as her, all of the individual things become easier to do and manage, right? So right now I know that there are ways you know that you're letting yourself down, right? So what are the things that you can commit to doing next month to show up as a better version of yourself? Sure, maybe it's not your highest version of yourself, but a better version of yourself. What are those things that you can do next month? Let's make a plan to integrate them this month.
Step number three is the monthly calendar. So here we're going to populate key dates into your monthly calendar spread. Consider things like holidays, birthdays, anniversaries, events, due dates, appointments, and any other days of significance that you need to be aware of in the upcoming month.
Step number four, the monthly tracker. Use the monthly tracker to outline all your goal-related tasks for the month in one place. So each month you can plan for up to three projects, five weekly action items or systems, and six daily action items or habits.
five, the monthly master task list. Populate your monthly master task list with any additional tasks that are due this month that are independent of your goals and objectives. Your monthly master task list paired with that monthly tracker are going to be your focus to-do list to pull tasks off of this month.
number six is task allocation. Review your monthly tracker and master task list to choose three priority tasks to allocate to each week of the month. This ensures that you have split up your work across the weeks of the month so that you have enough time to complete all of your essential items. If you find that you have too many priority tasks this month and properly allocating them is not possible, you may want to consider cutting down on your objectives for the month so that you do not overwhelm yourself. This step is really a check-in and an opportunity for you to take a good hard look at your to-do list and say, am I planning too much? When exactly am I going to be working on these different tasks that I've put on my to-do list? Do I need to make adjustments now so that I don't overwhelm myself and end up failing and discouraged later on?
And step number seven is the monthly manifestation journaling exercise. So use the following set of prompts to journal out what you would like to happen in your life this month. Think of this process as though you are creating a wish list of all the ways that you would love to be surprised and delighted by life this month. So prompt number one is what outcomes would you love to manifest this month? Go ahead and just make a bulleted wish list. Prompt number two is what unknowns, questions, or worries can you surrender to God, spirit, or the universe? Knowing, trusting, and believing that they will act on your behalf and ensure that you have a path ready to your goals. Look, very often I feel like we have these things that we know that we want in life, right? Things that we have listed out in prompt number one, all the things that we would love to happen in our life. But we fail to take action on them because we are worried about some unknown or some imagined obstacle that may be real, right? But it hasn't happened yet. And so we stop ourselves from taking action for fear that at some point during the process of us taking action, something is going to go wrong and is going to stop our progress. But what if that wasn't true, right? What if once you started taking action, and once you got to whatever the perceived obstacle was, that it actually wasn't a big deal, or the obstacle actually could be easily sidestepped, right? In that moment, when you're closer to the obstacle and it's actually in your way, you're actually able to see and make a little plan to overcome it, right? So our plans do not have to be obstacle-free. Very often, most of the things we're doing, if they're worth our time and energy in life, there's going to be some obstacles. But allowing the potential for obstacles in the future that you can't even see right now, right? To stop you from taking action on the things you can act on right now, right? That keeps you stuck in a cycle of inaction and disappointment with yourself and your life, right? So I want you to imagine that whatever those obstacles are that you're really worried about right now that are stopping you from taking action, I want you to write them down and just imagine that they are going to be handled for you by the time you get to that, that period, you know, where the obstacle pops up, right? There is going to be a clear path for you to be able to follow. There's nothing that's really going to stand in your way. That is prompt number two. And prompt number three is to write a list of affirmations to support you in believing that these outcomes that you've listed out for the month are already yours. They are destined to be yours. They're on their way to you right now. They are a foregone conclusion, right? So what would you need to believe in order for you to get into that feeling that, oh my gosh, these things that I asked for are going to really happen for me this month, right? So affirmations are positive statements. A lot of times they can start with I am or I have, but they can also just be generally positive statements, right? Things like everything is always working out for me or the things I desire also desire me, right? You could also go ahead and take each one of those bulleted like desires for the month and actually create a specific affirmation that speaks to whatever doubt you might have that that item might not come true, right? So if you look at that list and you see, okay, this thing right here, I don't actually really believe it, it I can ha I, it'll happen for me this month. Take whatever that doubt is and then flip it into a positive and write it in a statement that you can get you can get yourself behind like that makes you when you read it feel more positive and like this there's actually a potential that something miraculous right is going to happen for you in this area that you're looking for in your life okay so create that list of affirmations they will help you in supporting your mindset and your self-talk to actually believe that these things that you are wishing for right now are going to be yours mm -hmm.
Congratulations! So you now have not only a functional and efficient plan for the tasks that you will accomplish this month, but you also have shifted your mindset and opened yourself up to believing that you are going to get the things that you want from life this month. Moving forward, you will use this monthly plan to guide the tasks that you work on each week, using the monthly tracker to move forward your goals and your monthly master task list to act as a focused to-do list that you can plan your days around. So don't forget to come back to those affirmations that you wrote out frequently. Rereading those affirmations aloud a few times a day will help you to continue to shift your mindset in a way that will make it easier for you to actually take action and complete and accomplish your goals. So thank you so much for joining me in today's planning session. Feel free to bookmark this video and come back to it each month to plan. And of course, grab the workbook to help you make the most of this process. If you are looking for more planning strategies, I have one more thing that may interest you. I have a free on-demand workshop called How to Plan for a Balanced and Successful Life that will teach you more about planning and executing on your plan successfully. So if you want to learn more about how to set up a planner to help you get organized, how to establish a regular planning routine, and how to get more done in less time, this free workshop is precisely what you need. The link will be down below for you to access that free training now. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and feel free to share it with anyone you think would find it interesting. If you would like more of the behind the scenes of my productivity life and business, make sure you're following me on Instagram at Miss Trenchcoat. And if you're not yet subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button for more productive videos from me. And until next time, bye-bye.